Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's nine o'clock on a Tuesday. Hope you enjoyed the match entry that went up at three o'clock today. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. It's uh, the episode that goes out before uh, Matt's kind of uh, final test because we're doing the show this weekend. But anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, uh, I wanted to put an extra video out this week. We don't really normally do a video at nine o'clock on a Tuesday. I'm doing this video at nine o'clock today. Uh, and I considered not doing it, to be honest. I considered just not bothering. And uh, I did it because a bunch of people have contacted me regarding uh, my comments on a recent video. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to do a video, nine o'clock today, talking about the rant that I did on Friday and why I did it. Uh, because I don't think a lot of people realise or understand. And, and and basically what that means for the future of Magic TV. Because a lot of people messaged me. I put a post on Facebook saying, hey, I, sometimes it's difficult to keep this up. And, uh, and I, I answered a couple of people's comments saying, hey, don't know how much longer I'm going to do Magic TV. Uh, so I wanted to kind of address all of that. And at the same time, talk about that rant that I did on Friday. Like I said, I was very close to not doing this video. Uh, and the reason is, I just know, you know, I've been doing YouTube long enough to know that a week's late, a week's time, none of this will matter. Absolutely none of it will matter. The magic community will move on to another controversy. There'll be another trick come out that people don't like. Something else will have happened. There'll be another conspiracy theory. Somebody else will have done something and it'll be like water off a duck's back. It's very rare that uh, that stuff happens with this, within this community that kind of goes on for any length of time. Anyway, I thought I'd want to do it. I want to do it because, I, you know, I, I, I always said when I did this channel, I'd be completely honest and I would tell you exactly what my thought process is, what I'm feeling at any given time. When I came back to the magic community, I, I wanted to be completely upfront and honest with you guys and, and, and not hold anything back. And that's what I'm doing right now. So for those of you that don't know what's really going on, uh, basically, there is a channel called Everything Magic Pro, and it's run by a guy called Scott Perry. And he put a uh, review up about four days ago, well, uh, longer than that now, a few days ago, almost a week ago, he put a review up of The Fall by Kevin, uh, by Noel Quarter. And he actually titled it The Fall by Noel Quarter Review, capital letters, warning, watch this before buying. And I... Uh, watched that review and disagreed with several of the points that he made. And it actually made me really, uh, really angry. And one of the reasons it made me really angry is because I've been in a situation before where a review has been done on one of my products that is just complete and total fantasy land and none of the points are grounded in reality. And I saw the same thing happening here. Now, for sure, yes, um, you know, there were, there were a few points in there that were, you know, maybe 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 you could even say that they were correct. I, I don't think that. Uh, but then there's stuff that was just factually inaccurate. So I put together a, a video. Um, basically, it was a rant video and I don't do rant videos very often. I, I, you know, I still do them from time to time. They came back a little while ago. I still do them. I did a rant video on this particular review. And the point I was trying to make was that uh, when you're a magic reviewer, you have certain obligations. When you do a review, you have certain obligations because a negative review, and I, I, I do negative reviews on this channel, but the negative reviews that I do, I, 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 you know, I'm hyper aware I do a lot of research before I do a review. Don't think I just open up a box, look at it, and then post a video. There's a lot of research done into this. You'll rarely see me be one of the first review channels to review a product. It's very rare when that happens because I'm normally trying the trick out. There's a whole bunch, there's a process that goes on behind the scenes. And I understand that when you give a product an negative review, it can have really serious consequences for the creator, the producer, the distributor, the uh, the shops that are selling it. It can have negative implications for absolutely everybody. So when you give a negative review, you have to be 100% confident that what you're saying is correct. You have to be 100% confident. And there can't be no shades of grey. It has to, yes, obviously a review is grounded on your opinion, but there can't be any shades of grey. And... Um, I didn't realise 
that, uh, so I filmed this, uh, this rant, and I'd actually like to say, I don't know if Scott's going to watch this, I'd actually like to say, on the record, right now, I went too hard on the review. It was a combination of being really pissed off about the situation, and I kind of, I went into full-on rant mode, and it really didn't need that sort of video, and I don't think uh, we would have had the fallout that we did if I'd kind of handled it a different way, and that's on me, and I should have known that, and, you know, I'm always one that'll hold my hands up when I've, uh, when I've made a mistake, and I think, well, no, I didn't think. I definitely uh, went too hard on that, and, and that's on me. So if Scott's watching this, I'd like to apologise for the tone of the review uh, or the, the, the video. I don't want to apologise for the content at all. Not at all. Not one jot. But the tone, the way that I put it across, absolutely. I want to apologise for that 100%. Now, I didn't realise that Alakazam had, uh, or Harry Nardi from Alakazam, had also done a uh, a video about this review. Um, and, and also Prop Dog, on the Prop Dog Live, their Prop Dog Live was completely and totally 100%, well, not 100%, but a big part of it was focused on this review and uh, how there were several inaccuracies in the review. So you've got Prop Dog saying there were several inaccuracies. You've got Harry Nardi from Alakazam saying there were several inaccuracies. There's me saying there's several inaccuracies, and I know there's a lot of other people that feel the same way, including Tom Stone and a bunch of working professionals that I'm not going to name. I've spoken to a lot of people. I'm not going to name them. I don't think it's fair, but a lot of people um, agreed with the sentiments that this, this review basically came across like a hatchet job. So I, uh, and I didn't realise that Alakazam had made that review. I, contrary to popular belief, I don't speak to Alakazam every single day. It can go weeks before I've spoken to Alakazam or any other company that I work for. Um, I didn't know that they made this review. I had spoken to Noel because obviously I'd interviewed him to have uh, uh, an interview on the channel uh, because I was doing a review show special on the Sunday. Um, but I didn't... Um, yeah, but I, I, uh, I hadn't, hadn't spoken to Alakazam. I didn't know they were, they were making this, uh, th this video. They made the video, and then off the back of the video, very shortly the next day, so my video went up on Friday. I think their video went up on Friday morning, possibly. My video went up on the Friday evening at 9 o'clock, which is when the uh, videos go up on Magic TV. And uh, boom. And then on the... Uh, when was it? And then on the Saturday morning, I think it was the Saturday morning... A video dropped from Scott on Everything Pro Magic saying channel update the fall and Alakazam magic accusations. He didn't address my video and I think there's a reason. Um, and I think the reason is he probably filmed this before he saw my video because if this went up on the Saturday morning, uh, I don't think he would have been filming it on the Saturday morning. I think he would have filmed it before my video went up. Don't know. I'm not Scott. And, and in that video, he, it's a 28 minute video where he literally takes, every, he takes Harry's entire review, which is about seven minutes long, uh, and breaks it down step by step, pausing it and commenting over the top of it. So there's two issues here, or there's three issues, uh, four issues actually, that I want to address. Now the first issue is if I stand by the comments I made about Scott's video. The second point is um, why it was such a big deal, because I had a lot of people saying to me, why are you reviewing another reviewer? Um, the third point is the fallout from that and, and regarding the future of Magic TV, really. Um, so let's take them one at a time. The, the review, the reason I was so upset and the reason I made the video in the first place, and I kind of just addressed this a few minutes ago, so I'm not going to dwell on it, is because when you are a magic reviewer, you have a lot of power. You have a lot of power when you're a magic reviewer. And, and, and you, can, you, can, you can kill a product, which will kill a creator's reputation, by putting a negative review up. If it's justified. Now, obviously, it's Scott's opinion, just like it's my opinion as to what I think of The Fall. It's Steve Faulkner's opinion. Anyone who's reviewed The Fall, it's their opinion. Absolutely 100%. But like I said, it needs to be grounded in fact. 100% categorical fact. And the video that I made on the Friday did a very bad job of pointing out why this felt like a hatchet job against Noel Coulter. And it did. It felt like a hatchet job against Noel Coulter. 
And, you know, I, I made some points and I was shouting when I made the points. So let me try and make a couple of them right now, because the problem is between the two videos. And I don't want to dwell on this, I don't, but I, I think I need to bring this up because in order to I don't want to say defend myself, I'm not defending myself to anybody. You know, it's your choice whether you watch my channel or not. But in order to explain everything that's gone on, I think I need to make you understand why I said what I said. And between the two videos that, that Scott put up. There were a lot of inaccuracies. So several times in the, in the second video, and, and let's take my video out of the equation because Scott was talking about, uh, his rebuttal video was talking about Harry's video, not mine. I've already established that my video went way over the top and didn't make the point as well as it could have. But let's talk about his, uh, his video against Harry. Many times he, he, I watch, honestly, go and watch that Alaka Sam video. I don't feel like Harry was personally attacking Scott at all. I don't think like Harry was personally attacking Scott at all. However, there are moments in that second video where there's no denying it, Scott is personally attacking Harry. Right from the very beginning when he says, hey, I'll stick to reviewing products and you stick to working in a magic shop. You know, that's just, here's the thing. Alakazam are entitled to put a video up. If somebody's put a video up that's saying negative things about a product that they stock, and I know from having now spoken to Alakazam that they were getting customers ringing in and going, hey, I've seen this review, I'm considering buying this, but I've got issues with this, 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 this. They did the video to try and address those concerns to their customers. They've got every right to do so. But you can't say that Harry was attacking you personally, which he didn't. At one point, did he, uh, he, he, didn't, uh, he, didn't, he didn't flat out say, hey, Scott, you, 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 you've got no skill. He said, if you think this way, then, blah. But you're saying, hey, it was really, really unprofessional the way that Alec Azam did that. But you were doing the same thing. You were, you, were, you, were, you were attacking his level of skill. You were attacking his level of skill in the video. And then, you know, the, 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 you, made, you took big exception to uh, one of the points that Harry made was about, um, your, was about, about whether Scott had actually performed this in the real world. And, and he doubted that, that Scott had performed this in the real world. And took, Scott took exception to that and said, hey, you know, um, yeah, how, how, how dare you insinuate that I'm a liar? How do you know that I've not been working it all week? Um, but then he did exactly the same thing to Alec Azam. He stated in his video that the only reason that Alec Azam made a video like this is because they have 200 of them sitting in their warehouse and a review of him is not going to, um, is, is going to mean that they're not going to sell them. Alec Azam have got none of them in stock. This is not an Alakazam product. Alakazam have bought it in. But as far as I'm aware from speaking to Noel, and I asked him this on the Review Show Special, so you can go and check with the Review Show Special I put up on Sunday and listen to him say this himself. There's none left at Murphy's. They're done. He's sold them all. There's none left for any of the magic shops. He's got a few in his house, and that's it. When the video was made... Alakazam didn't have any stock. I don't know if they're going to get any more stock. I don't think so. Because from speaking to Noel, I don't think they get any more stock. So how is it okay for, you, for Scott to make an assumption about the reason that this video is being made? And yet it's not okay, according for Scott, for Harry to make an assumption as to whether he's performed this trick in the real world or not. Especially when, as far as I'm concerned, having performed this is a really important, really, really important part of reviewing a product. I've said this before. I think that reviewers should have performed this every trick. Every trick they reviewed, they should have gone out and performed it. Not necessarily in the real world, but to family, to friends, maybe do a wife test or something like that. That's important. That's really, really important. And the reason it's so important is because the only way you can get an understanding of how this trick works, or any trick, is by actually going through the motions of taking it out. I'm turning this down because it's a nightmare. Taking it out and, and performing it. You know, it's the only way that you can get an understanding. Sorry, I'm getting message left, right and centre here, and I need to turn this off, and I don't know how to. 
I have to turn this off. I don't know. Uh, can I do it on? Ah, there you go. Focus. There you go. Do not disturb. So the only way that you can get a clear understanding of whether something works is by going out and performing it and, and going through the motions. If you just open it up, look at the props, and then you look at the... Uh, uh, you look at the um, and, and, and then you look at the props and then you just kind of watch the video and you go, no, this is no good. That's not good at all. Now, you could argue a lot of the videos that I put out initially are performances to Ryland or performances to somebody in my office. And then later on, I'll do a review show revisited on some of them. You could argue, oh, you know, it's not it's not, you know, it's it's, it's no different to just performing it to your son. Or, but there is a massive difference because in order to get it to a position where I'm comfortable performing it in front of a camera means that I have had to try it out. So I, I don't understand. I, don't, I just don't understand the point. It's, it's, it's that sort of thing. It's calling the trailer out. It's, it's saying, hey, I don't understand why Matthew Wright was on the trailer. Uh, it was needlessly, unneedlessly hyping the trick. Well, Matt was hired to do the trailer. It actually said that in the trailer. That's why he was in the trailer. Like, I get hired to do trailers all the time. Matt, Matt got hired to do the trailer. And that's the purpose of a, a video, to hype it. The purpose of a trailer is to hype the product. I've heard some people say, oh, they should have shown a full performance. Hardly any trailers show a full performance. I think that, yes, full performances are good on the trailer, but there's certain times when doing a full performance will completely expose the trick completely expose the trick it's like saying that you need a jacket to uh to re uh, to perform the trick you need a, you need a coat to perform a trick now scott should have elaborated on that and maybe it's because he's only been reviewing magic for a couple of years or two or three years i don't know but he should have elaborated on that because as an end user when you hear a reviewer say you need a jacket in order to do a trick they're going to think pull, they're going to think top it, they're going to think that there's some reason that the jacket's in play. Now, Scott's point was you need to wear a jacket because you need to put the, the bag in your pocket and it can be in your back pocket. But he didn't elaborate on that in the initial video. And, and he, he addressed it as a major negative. There were lots of negatives that came up. One of the big points that he made on both videos is that it wasn't a precision-made gimmick. Have you spoken to, to, to Noel about this, Scott? Because a lot of the time when I'm doing a review and it's a negative review, I will reach out to the person who's done it. Now, a lot of the time they don't reply, but I will reach out to the person in question. And this is a perfect example. You say it's, you make a big deal in the second video about how it's not a precision made gimmick. And by almost basically exposing the trick, you talk about how it's two cards stuck together with a piece of sellotape and a shimmed card, and that that's not a handmade gimmick. Scott, you do realise, well, obviously you don't, but, you know, you should have. That's not an off-the-shelf shimmed card. You do realise this, right? It's not an off-the-shelf shimmed card. That card has been split by hand. It has been lined up with a laser cutter, and you can hear uh, Noel talk about this on my interview with him from Sunday. It's been lined up with a laser cutter at Prop Dog. And then the, 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 everything's been put into a very specific position with a specific type of magnet in order to do this trick. You can't do this. And if you learned the trick and if you realized the trick, you would know that. Because one, the magnets need to be different strengths. This is not an off-the-shelf shimmed card that you can buy. This is a shimmed card that has been specifically made for this effect. But you're going on about how, oh, it's just a piece of sellotape. It's not. It's a very, very, very difficult thing to make that you had to hire Prop Dog for in order to get the precision-made cards. And yet you made the point on the initial review, oh, these aren't handmade. You called him out on that. That was one of your big points. And then when Harry called that into question, because Harry knew how these cards were made, or at least I believe he is. I haven't actually spoken to Harry about this at all. I've spoken to Peter, but not Harry. You then, in the follow-up video, you talk about how, you know, there's a big difference between handmade and, and, and what Noel's providing. But he's had to, how is it not hand mine when you're splitting cards, getting specific magnets, lining it up with a laser cutter? Like, it's these things that you're spouting off as factual that's just not true. So the points on the trailer you, you say aren't accurate, like the handmade gimmicks 
And, and you know, you talked about the reset is a long time. It's not a long time to do a reset. Five seconds. Five seconds is the reset. It's not a long time. It's not a long time. And then you say you can't perform it 360. You can perform it 360. And, and you talk about how, you know, short people will be able to see it. Honestly, you made the point about how people could you could do it technically 360, but, uh, you know, people won't be able to see because everyone's going to be crowded around. Well, that's kind of the same with a lot of tricks. You know, if you do walk around and, and, and you've got people completely surrounded you and there are a couple of rows back, they're not really able to see what's going on. But come on, you and I both do walk around. You don't get that. Normally at a walk around gig, you haven't got a complete crowd around you that's like two or three deep. You're normally performing to maybe five or six people or sometimes if you build a crowd up, you're performing to 10 or 12 people or something. Or, you know, you, you very rarely are you completely like that. And if it's an issue for this trick, there's a million other tricks it's an issue with. You, you make the point about the car being too big to, you know, you, how, there's a million tricks where you have to hold something secretly in your hand like a playing card. Have you done that with every single review that you've done, every single review that requires the use of a palm card? Have you made, have you labored the point that the hand will be too small? Because I was looking at your comments in your video and you talked about, um, um, oh, there's a lot of, you know, there's magicians that only have one finger or have small hands. As I said in my video, there's a million ways around that with a little bit of logical thinking. Ryland can do it just by pushing down with two hands. There's ways around it. So why did I do the video? Uh, having watched both videos side by side, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm not glad I did the video the way I did it, but I'm glad I did the video in terms of the content of the video. Because honestly, I just don't think that this was right. I don't know if Scott's got an issue with Noel or something, but there's something going on because... Like, the points that Scott is making in his review don't line up. And I'm not the only person that thinks so. Which is why I've never seen Alakazam make a, make a review like that before. It wasn't because it was their own product. It's not because they know Noel very well. It's because they felt that it was completely unjustified. Tom Stone's been commenting on your channel. Is Tom Stone in on this conspiracy theory as well? Things just don't line up. There's, there's a lot of inconsistencies. And that's why I did the video. I did the video. People ask me over and over again, why do you feel the need to review the reviewer? Why do you feel the need to review the reviewer? Because I would hope that people would more call my re reviews into question if they felt that I was out of line with anything that I was saying. I try to be very, very careful and methodical and well thought out. Trust me, me and Ryland don't just sit here and, and just start talking, we spend weeks deciding what's going to be on the review show and performing it. You have, and that's why I think it's so important to learn the trick. You know, in the comments, people have asked Scott, have you gone and performed it? Have you got, learned it? Have you gone and learned it? And, and I think that's the important question because that getting a trick to the point that you're comfortable doing it on camera can really affect how you think the trick's going to end up working. There's tricks that I've reviewed, and I've opened the box and watched the trailer, and I thought, this is terrible. Done the trick, and I'm amazed by the reactions it gets, and I've changed my mind. So that's why I did the, uh, that's why I did the, um, uh, the video. A lot of inaccuracies. A lot of inaccuracies. However, off the back of that, the thing that I... I it feels like, you know, like... It, um, Scott was going on and on again, on and on about um, I, 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 about how Alakazam are very unprofessional for making the video that they made. Um, and I don't think they were. I think that they were perfectly within their right to make that video. I think that anybody is within their right to make that video or any video that they want to make. You can't police uh, what videos people can and can't make. You can talk about a video, absolutely. But, but it feels like there was trying to be a boycott going on of, uh, of, 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 of Alakazam off the back of this video. And I don't think that's fair by any stretch of the imagination. 
But then off the back of this, so, you know, um, there was a lot of backlash over the Saturday and the Sunday to do with my video and to do with uh, uh, Alec Azana's video and the two videos that Scott put out. And, and as I say, you know, it, it, I think he's achieved what he wanted to achieve. His subs have massively gone up. Uh, as a result of this taking place. You look at the channel update that went up a day ago as time of filming, uh, 1,500 views. The actual review, 2,500 reviews. And you look at the ones that before, uh, Pointless, 334 views. Foreign Affair, 217 views. Collapsible Wine Glass, 391 views. Double Exposure Review, 376 views. Ollie Mealing's Friday Review, 340 reviews. I Drop Tom, uh, Nick Ellis, um, Tim Ellis, sorry, 194 views. Print, 317 views. Jack's Wallet, 235 views. The, the, it goes on and on and on. Like it, It's fairly obvious to see that, you know, controversy. I, I think this is what Scott wanted to achieve, which is why I considered not making the video. And as again, I say, I say, you know, Scott seems like a nice guy. Um, he seems like a nice guy. Absolutely, 100%. Seems like a nice guy. Um, don't know him. Don't know him for Adam. But... Uh, uh, I think that we'd probably get on if we had a drink. I do say some good things about the fall. I don't think it's a terrible trick. I just think that there are much better alternatives. Fortunately, is that I think it is a complete waste of time for a number of reasons. I have wasted my money on this, so hopefully you don't have to. Uh, I will go into all of the reasons why I think this is not a good magic trick. It's not a good product. And, uh, and the reasons why I don't recommend anyone buys it as well. Yes, they are made by two hands, but they are not handmade. So handmade gimmicks is, for me, a phrase that is used in magic to glorify what you are receiving. When, when the phrase handmade gimmick uh, is mentioned on a trailer or a product, for me at least, that insinuates that it is, a, it is a complicated, precision-made gimmick. I didn't make the gimmicks. Uh, a brilliant magician called Michael Jordan uh, came up with the, uh, uh, the uh, made the gimmicks for me. I made a small part of it. Uh, I made two small parts of it, but he did the, 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 the hard yards, and uh, it's an insurmountable job. I spent two weeks at Prop Dog on the laser cutter, moving, the, uh, moving things around and asking Dave if he wouldn't mind moving the laser cutter a quarter of a nil so as I could you know, do something very precise. And uh, Dave's patience was, you know, I think he had to go to Wales just because he was having a breakdown with me begging him to uh, to shift it a quarter of a mil. Because I wanted perfection because I, you know, I wanted, you know, I wanted it to work perfectly. I can't... Again, making accusations. Um, for all you know, I've been practicing it for the last week on people. Uh, so what you are saying there is a lie. You are making an accusation saying that I have reviewed it based on the fact that I have never performed it. You don't know that. So I'm not entirely sure why he is taking this approach when he hasn't contacted me to ask if I've tried it. And you're just upset about my review because Alakazam has 200 units of this that they need to sell. Um, this is very unprofessional, as I say, from, from Harry, from Peter Nardi, from Alakazam. I'm very disappointed with this response. Yeah. Harry, you stick to staying in a shop and deming stuff for magicians, and I'll stick to reviewing stuff, yes? Clearly, Harry, you don't know anything about performing magic in the real world, right? So this is how it works. You have to stick a magnet to your hand like this with super putty, which some people won't be able to do just because of their hand type. But let me show you. Here's what happens in the fall. Uh, I will let you be the judge because I will never tell you what you need to listen to. I am not like Alakazam. I will not tell you what you need to ignore and what is lies and what is truth. Like, it's ridiculous to, to think any of this stuff would work in the real world. And uh, trust me, any worker out there, and some of you may not be workers, some of you may be hobbyists, some of you may be amateurs, but I'm telling you, if you are a working, gigging magician, you don't want a roll of A4 plastic rolled up in your pocket, taking up an entire pocket. It, it's just unreasonable. Do you know why you wouldn't perform it that way, Harry? Because it's ludicrous. No one is going to do that. It's stupid. Hey, I'm uh, currently, it's 2.30 in the morning and I'm editing this video together. 
And I just wanted to make one point, which is I'm going to play a live performance of this trick now before I go into the rest of the video. And I just want you to have a look at it because the point I'm trying to make with this whole thing is the fall is actually a really good commercial trick. And this live performance that you see of, of uh, Noel doing it, yeah, there's a moment where the deck goes underneath the, the bag, but it's motivated. It's completely 100% motivated. Um, they're holding onto the corners and he's like, hey, can you bring your hands underneath? And he puts his hands underneath the bag. Um, and, and, and it's done in a second. And don't forget, he's holding a face-up card underneath the bag. And he's holding the deck face down. And it's over in a split second. There's no fumbling. There's no difficult motion. That is completely motivated. Honestly, anybody who performs in the real world, watch this and tell me if you think that this is not a good performance. Watch this live performance and tell me if you don't think it's practical. Tell me if you think that it's a bad trick. The effect of the trick. If you think that the effect of the trick is a bad trick, tell me. If you think it's not practical, tell me. Because I've watched this video over and over again. I've watched it 10 times now. And for me, it's such a powerful moment. The move that we all know is there, thanks to Scott's exposure, is done in a split second. And the, 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 the there's no angle issues. There's no angle issues. You just see, you know, you, you yeah, there's nothing. It's a brilliant trick. So take aside everything else. Watch this live performance. And tell me in the comments down below if you think that this really deserved such a scathing negative review. Hello folks, I'm going to show you something that magicians shouldn't really, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to break two rules of magic, I'm going to make something pass through an impossible object. We have a little look at that and we'll make sure it's exactly what it appears to be. So magicians would normally do something with something that's transparent because they don't want you to see the exact moment the magic is happening. Uh, I want to see the exact moment the magic is happening. So here's the idea. Holly, in a moment, you're going to put your hands underneath okay. to catch something. Are you going to catch him? No, not really. <laughs> fine, that's fine. You're all right for a minute. I will tell you when. So you need a random part. Let's just get that a little bit loose, if that's all right. Perfect. Okay, here's the idea. Um, I'm going to try this. Perfect. Will you bring it, down, bring it down a little bit lower for me? Perfect. Uh, keep it steady on this side. Steady on this side. Here's the idea. Holly, will you put your hands underneath for me? One, two, three. <gasps> Oh my god, how did you do that? <laughs> I feel like any... Oh my god. That's amazing. How did you... <laughs> now off the back of it, I had people um, calling my ethics into question. And, 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 and then this is the other thing I want to address because they... Um, calling my ethics into question, calling Alakazam's ethics into question, a lot of people think that there's, there's some sort of weird conspiracy theory um, going on and there's the, some sort of magic mafia there's this guy here that uh, uh that, that i'll read his comment disappointing in this craig you didn't need to do this it just comes across as you defend your own magic sidekicks the guy's review was his own honest opinion uh which magicians don't like to hear this is clearly the circle click quote marks of magic dealers bullying the guy for his own honest opinion and I said, do you really believe I'm in a circle of people that manipulate reviews? Either way, it doesn't matter. And, and he said, yes, I do, Craig. It is my opinion, and I am entitled to it. You would never give an Alakazam product a poor review, as we know there are several of them that deserve a poor review. You have let yourself down by going on the rant route again, saying you were done with this sort of childish behaviour. It doesn't impress anyone. It's simply cringeworthy. I gave this channel another uh, another go after you stated you'd be done with the rant thing, but I'm now officially done. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and so on and so forth. And, and there's a few people that think there's this whole uh, sort of circle um, and, and, and that I'm in it. Uh, you know, there's somebody who said they sent their head cheerleader over um, to, uh, to, to deal with them. And apparently I'm their head cheerleader. Uh, can't find it anywhere, but uh, can't find it anywhere. But apparently I'm their, uh, their head cheerleader. Um, but whatever. Um, I just need people to understand, because I'm getting to the, uh, the point about the future of Magic TV now. I need people to understand I really couldn't care less 
if I give a product a good review or a bad review, as long as I believe that the review is justified. I would happily give Alakazam a bad review. I personally have never seen a bad product from Alakazam. I think they've all been good. Um, the, the, you know, there's some review, there's some Alakazam products that I haven't given a great review to, um, uh, but 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 I haven't given anything a negative review because everything I've seen has been really good. Look, look, I work a lot with Penguin. Last year, they flew, they flew me out three times, and I worked the Penguin line. I worked the Penguin booth at Magic Live. This year, I'm going over to Columbus again in April, and they're uh, they're they're having me on Magic Live again on their stand. I've just been awarded the Penguin uh, Magic Creator of the Year. You could say I'm affiliated more closely with Penguin than I am with Alakazam. I fronted their uh, um, their, uh, their their flip balm product. I fronted their uh, boombox product. There's other products that I've done for them that haven't got anything to do with me. Um, last year, I appeared on their nomination show as one of the live panel. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that um, you know I'm 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 very closely affiliated with Penguin. Several of their products I've given a bad review to. Uh, Nicholas Lawrence's Diabolical that came out recently, I gave that a very very bad review. Look at Magic Dream. They booked me to perform and lecture at their convention rendezvous in March. Um, I've given their products a bad review in the past many times and I've rung up and told Johan that I don't think a particular trick is very good. Murphy's, you know, I'm very closely affiliated with Murphy's because of my relationship with Lloyd, but I've ripped into, Lloyd, uh, into Murphy's in the past. So to turn around and say that I'm in on it, and I, I first of all, I hardly ever speak to these companies unless it's something to do with a trick that's been released or something they need off me. They don't ring me up all the time. There can be weeks and months go by before I speak to somebody from Alakazam or Murphy's. Well, not necessarily Murphy's, because I speak to Lloyd every week, but uh, Alakazam or, or, or any of those uh, people, uh, Penguin, 1914, whatever, it can go weeks. To think that like we're all just sitting around and that I'm giving bad... And it, it belittles what I do. Because I buy every single trick that I review. I, very few people do that. Very, very few people do that. I've just had somebody want me to review glyphs. So I've just spent £400 on glyphs so I can review it. I've just had somebody else want me to review something that I've spent £400 on to review that. I spend a fortune on magic tricks, a lot of which go in the bin, specifically to review them. And there's nobody that's more negative about tricks than me. So to say that I'm part of this little gang that, that, that like, put reviews together... It's not right. And you know what? Normally, I don't know if you know this, because before I started doing YouTube properly, I didn't know. But when somebody leaves a comment on your channel, I can check every single comment that they've ever made on my channel, ever. And the people that have been leaving the reviews in the last couple of weeks that go, oh, I've been a big fan of yours since the Wizard Pro Review days, I, and, and, and then proceed to rip into me and tell me I'm a piece of shit... I click on them and I look at their I look at their thing and it was just two months ago that they were uh, they were calling uh, they were calling me names to something else or ripping me into something else. Perfect example is this guy here, Mark Young. I screen captured this because this is very funny. Um, uh, he posted and said Scott did an honest review and the anger you display to someone trying to save some of us money is disturbing. It's just hilarious because I went and clicked on his stuff. Um, and the comment that he made before that was on Pro Caps by Lloyd Barnes, the Matt test. So it was when I was doing the Matt test on Lloyd Bar on uh, Matt, and it was for Pro Caps. And the last comment he put on my channel was, "Matt really is not the sharpest tool in the shed. Perhaps he's special needs." So hang on, you're telling me I'm disturbing um, because I got angry making a video, and yet you're calling one of the members of staff in my office special needs because he didn't like a magic trick, because he liked a magic trick. It's why I can't take this shit seriously. There's this guy, Warrior Poet, who comes out of the uh, woodwork every time that something happens. It's the same people that come out whenever there's like some sort of controversy, whether it's the quantum deck or whatever it is. Same people come out. 
uh, and he comes out. Um, Craig is the definition of a mean-spirited bully. This man feels the need to curse every two minutes. He's always, a bi he's always biased and has never given his friends an honest review. The guy is a narcissist and nothing more and his contributions are not what he claims. Creator of the year, laughable. This guy has ripped off more creators than any other magician. Sure, if you want to listen to a man who doesn't shave, is covered in gross tattoos and feel the need to swear every two minutes, then by all means, knock yourself out. Um, uh, yeah, uh, knock yourself out. Craig only lashed out at this man because he has an affiliation with Alakazam. Didn't even know Alakazam were doing anything. If it wasn't friends with Peter or Harry, he would most likely have never made this idiotic rant. I made the rant didn't even know Peter, didn't even know Harry had made a video. The rant was made before the rebuttal video was put up by Ujimi Plonk. It went out before the rebuttal video that came out by Scott. So, it, it, hang on, why would I make it? It just makes no sense. I only lashed out at this man because he has an affiliation with Alakazam. If he wasn't friends with Peter or Harry, he would most likely never made this idiotic rant. Why would I make a rant? It just doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. But you get people like that all the time. And uh, it's always the same people. And they've always got a fake account. But you know what? It gets to you. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe I did the video the wrong way. Maybe I did the video the wrong way uh, in terms of the way that I put it across. But I believe every word I said. I also, And maybe I'm looking at it as a creator as well as a reviewer, which is a very unique position to be in. Name somebody else, David Penn and Wayne Fox on the Wizard Product Review. Yeah, maybe. Name somebody else who is a prolific in creator and also a reviewer. Doesn't really happen, right? So maybe it's I'm looking at it from a creator's point of view, but I don't think it's fair. I mean, Scott basically just gave away the method to the trick. If you watch the first video and the second video, you can pretty much see what's going on. You can pretty much see what's going on. And as far as I'm concerned, that's as bad as Rick Lax um, exposing the, um, uh, uh, you know, exposing Mr. Danger. It's, it's just not right. You know, he's talking about magnets. He's talking about uh, loading moves. He's talking about, and then in the second video, he even shows the whole process taking place. Uh, it's... <sighs> I don't think that's right. As a creator, it's not right that somebody would blatantly expose 90% of the trick and how it works with a review, unless it's okay to. Like, for example, I recently reviewed the Tetra Cube and we showed how the Tetra Cube worked because Max, the creator of the Tetra Cube, has done that multiple times on social media. And I think that one of the big selling points of the Tetra Cube is that it's completely self-working and how it works. I don't think that's a bad thing. But when the method of the trick shouldn't be given away, giving away 95% of the method in a, in a product really... I, I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's fair that, that, that Scott has made assumptions about whether the gimmicks are handmade or not. Assumptions about angles or making, you know, pathetic little comments about things like the trailer and that it's not workable and it'll only work for drunk people. He says that, uh, you know, he said multiple times in his second video, uh, it, it, multiple times in the comments and on his second video, I don't think it's that bad. It's an okay trick. I just don't think, I think that there's better tricks out there. But then you look at the first video and he's ripping into it and saying, this is pathetic, this is rubbish, this is a waste of money. It's like, how have you gone from that to that? It's like, there's no clear message here. And honestly, I really do believe that there's, there's, there's some sort of thing going on here, which is why I made the video. The other thing that I noticed, you'll notice when you leave a comment on my YouTube channel and it's personally attacking somebody else, 90% of the time it's deleted. If we miss it, we miss it. There's a lot of comments that come through, but we automatically delete comments where somebody is attacking somebody else because we don't want that, that sort of content on there. The only person that can delete a comment like that is the person whose YouTube channel it is or the person who made the comment. And I don't think, and, and we miss them sometimes, but we try to delete all of the personal attacks on people because I, I don't think 
that it should be personal, even though on the video that I made, I was I was ranting. I, I don't think I ever, you know, if I if, I don't think I made it personal. I, I definitely shouted and I shouldn't have. I think I used the word dickhead once, which again was because I was getting irate. But I mean, like you look at this Gaz Lawrence, for example, who I have uh, in the past stuck up for many, many times uh, just recently. He asked me to, uh, to to post something on the Magic Cafe on his behalf, and I did. Um, he posted a comment on the video saying, um, Harry had his five minutes of fame because of Russ Stevens, and now he's a nobody again, working in a shop with another nobody. I'm assuming it means Andy Smith. Um, that, that's the reality, and everyone knows his comments mean absolutely nothing to most experienced magicians. To be fair, how many people would ever hire Noel for a gig? He's overweight and has the personality of a newt and is the most awkward person on the planet. He's everything magic is not about. In my opinion, he's a geek, which lay people absolutely hate. He's a decent creator, but not a performer. And a bit like Angelo Carbone. How did Angelo Carbone get involved in this? A bit like Angelo Carbone, but at least he knows his place in magic, unlike Noel. So in one paragraph or two paragraphs, he's, he's insulted Angelo Carbone, um, Harry Nardi, uh, Andy Smith, and uh, Noel, Noel Coulter. Um, that would have been deleted in a heartbeat. That would have been, that made me really angry. Really, really angry. Like, I know Gaz, I have defended Gaz, and I know he'll be listening to this, because he's made numerous comments on your YouTube channel. It seems that he's, he's found YouTube now because he's not got the Magic Cafe anymore to... Um, to, uh, you know, like basically tell everyone uh, his opinion. So now he's gone on to, uh, to YouTube and he's trying it on YouTube, you know, because, you know, your self-worth is tied into the amount of comments that you make on a YouTube channel or onto a message forum. Um, and I know off the back of this, he's going to be very, very annoyed with me. But the bottom line is that is ridiculous. Slagging off somebody like Harry Nardi, who goes out working all of the time. Noel Qualter calling him fat, overweight geek? Seriously? This coming from somebody who's a full-time builder and, like, fucking only actually has self-worth when he's posting on a, uh, a message forum or on a YouTube channel? Somebody who um, isn't as good as he thinks he is? I'm trying to keep this calm. I'm trying not to go into rant mode again. Seriously, does anyone agree with that? And then go and have a look. There's multiple other comments by Gaz talking about uh, me and a whole bunch of other people. Um, and he's not the only one. Uh, Alan Lawler, little Harry is so unprofessional for this and should take his remarks down now. Immature and foolish. I, for one, will not be buying anything from Alakazam until this little kid takes an embarrassing attack on your good self down. Seriously? You're calling him immature and you're a grown ass man and you're making little comments like that. Whatever. I'm as bad for making the ramp video. I'm as bad for making the ramp video. Whatever. Um, I, in the last 48 hours, uh, read a ton of comments. Um, people who say that um, uh, I'm, uh, well, uh, insulting my appearance like warrior poet, but multiple people. Oh, insulting my ability to be a parent. Uh, insulting Ryland, insulting my ability to parent Ryland. Um, insulting um, my ethics, saying that um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm biased. And look, let me, let me explain something to you. And this is why I made several posts saying that I'm done with YouTube or I'm coming close to being done with YouTube. And to be honest, on Saturday, I really felt that way. And I'll tell you for why. All of the people, why do, why do I, right, okay. It, I spent eight hours a day creating content for YouTube. You want to know? So many people ask me, oh my God, how does Craig get so much done in one day? How does Craig get so much done in one day? He's a machine, he goes out and performs, he runs this company, he runs this company. How do I do it? By half killing myself by working eight hours a day, every single day, creating content. That's how I do it. That is exactly what I do. Eight hours a day, every day. 
For the people that say, oh, Craig's biased, there's a little clique of people who, uh, you, know, uh, 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 you know, are manipulating reviews or whatever it is. My question is why? You want to look at the ad revenue I get from YouTube? I'll show you what it is. It's just over £600. This whole channel makes just over £600 a month. I spend that in one day buying stuff to review. I have spent literally tens of thousands of pounds every single year buying stuff I will never use that will ultimately get thrown in the bin. Tens of thousands of pounds. Why would I do that? Why? Why? Think about it seriously. If I've got this whole, hey, if I'm ahead of this fucking thing that's like trying to manipulate reviews and, and, and cause people to, uh, to, to buy more stuff and convince people to buy from dishonest trailers when tricks aren't good. Why would I do that? Because I'm losing a fortune by doing this review show. I could be focusing on my business. I could be focusing on me as a performer. I could be focusing on my son as a performer. I could be focusing on all of that stuff rather than sitting around creating magic, rather than sitting around coming up. Do you know how long it took to do the hows and whys of the, the wow? When I decided I was going to do a wow video for everybody that I put up on Christmas Day. It took hours, weeks to put all of that content together. I sit here constantly coming up with ideas for YouTube videos to give out to people for free. I try to help as many people in this community as possible. James Keatley's got a trick coming out of Blackpool. It's called Bitcoin. It's amazing. I've given him negative reviews in the past, by the way. Um, you know, his Black Ops watch. I ripped into it and did an honest trailer on it. But... He showed me this Bitcoin and he was like, I want to release it at Blackpool. Um, I, you know, I, I, Lloyd, he asked Lloyd to help him with the trailer. Lloyd was busy. I literally gave up two days of my time to go and create routines for it. Go and co-host it. Find a place to film it. Go and get a camera crew to come and film it for him. Edit the whole tutorial together. Edit a trailer together. And I've just given it to him for nothing in return. Go and speak to John Morton. John Morton's got a new trick coming out at Blackpool. It's all about Lego. It's brilliant. He hasn't got a tutorial. He hasn't got a, a, a trailer. I said, John, I'd love to help you. I will do the same for you. But this time, he's too busy to come down and film it. I've hired a venue. I've hired a camera crew. I have created 15 routines for the project. I am now filming it on Wednesday. I'll then edit everything together for him, sending it over to him, including a trailer, and I'm doing it for free. You don't believe me? Go and ask James Keatley and John Morton. Ask me what I've asked them, what I've asked for them in return. Absolutely nothing. I've done it because I believe in their tricks. I think that they're really good tricks and I wanted to try and help them. <coughs> go speak to the kids of magic and go and ask them. How much stuff I give them when I meet up with them in the session and I say, here's all my products. Take it for free. Go and ask anybody who's ever seen me lecture ever at any place ever if I've got stuff to sell at the back of the room. No, I haven't. Even though I've got a ton of products I can take and sell, I structure my lectures so that I don't have to sell anything to anybody because I don't believe in it. Go and ask the, the YMC what I offered for them last week, which was to basically take my brand new trick and give them 60 copies of it for free so that they could give one to every single member of the YMC. Go and ask them if I did that. Go and ask them. Go and ask them. Go and speak to multiple people who I have given free memberships to, to the net tricks because, for life because they can't afford to be on there. So I've given them a free thing for life. Or how many people I've just jumped on a Zoom call with to help them with a the problem because they've messaged me and they've said they've got a problem. Go and ask all of these people. And then go and ask people like Peter Nardi whether I'm money motivated. I still don't know whether I get paid from him because I don't have anything to do with the bloody invoices. He chased me up for a year for an invoice. Go and ask D. Christopher. Go and ask anybody. If I'm doing this whole thing for money, then I'm the biggest idiot on the planet because I give my time for free. I sit here for eight hours a day creating content to give out for free. I do all of this without asking anything in return.
If I'm such a terrible person, if I'm such a narcissist, if I'm such a money-grabbing swine, why the hell am I even doing this? Why am I even doing this? A narcissist is somebody who thinks they're absolutely amazing 24-7. I don't. I, how many times do you see me posting going, oh my God, I'm a piece of shit. Why do I keep doing this? And yet people will constantly call me out for being a narcissist. They'll call me out for being an egomaniac. They'll call me out for this, that, and the other. All of the time. It gets jarring. It gets enough. Especially when I don't need to be doing this. I don't need to be sitting here creating content and missing my kids grow up. You know, I could be up there watching a family film right now, but I'm not. I'm down here doing a video. And I happily do it. And I still find time to spend time with my family, but I happily do it. But you know what? You know how I would be defined as a money-grabbing person? Is if I didn't do any of this crap within the magic community. If I didn't give up my time for free. And instead, if I went and... Um, focused on my business and focused on me being a performer. Do you know there's multiple times when I have um, I could have took a gig for myself, a high-end, really high-end uh, uh, motivational speaking gig, but I haven't because instead I promised to go and do something for free for somebody else or I'd arranged a Zoom call for free for somebody else. That's why I went on on Saturday night and I was like, you know what, I think I'm done with this YouTube channel. I said I think I'm done with this YouTube channel because as far as I'm concerned, I was. Because why do I need this crap? Yeah, I made a mistake. I made a mistake and I shouldn't have gone as hard on Scott as I did. Don't regret making the video. I just re regret the tone of the video. But yeah, yeah, made a mistake. Made a mistake. But then I have people calling my appearance into question, calling my kid into question again. Just like a Blackpool 2022, when people were slagging off Ryland behind my back for having the balls to go on stage and making a small mistake. And still none of those people have said it to my face. Why do I bother is what was going through my head. Why do I bother? What is the point in sitting here constantly creating content, spending thousands of pounds on tricks I will never use, spending all of my time and effort and energy putting content together for free, 27 videos a week, to make 600 pound off YouTube a month? Why? What's the point in me? I haven't got a magic shop. I don't have a Murphy's account. I've got no dog in this fight. I'd understand if I had my own magic shop. Maybe if I had my own big magic shop and I was doing these reviews and then pushing people to buy it from me. Look at the links in the description on the YouTube review shows. Where do they go? To the creator's website <coughs> or to a magic shop's website. None of them come to me. None of them come to me. Because I couldn't sell it to you if I tried. In fact, let's take it one step further. I've got boxes of quantum decks up there. Part of my deal with these magic companies is that they give me all of this stock. I've got it all sitting around in my warehouse. If I was money motivated, I would create a website with my own stuff on it where people could come and buy it off me. But I don't. Because it's easier to just say, oh, get it from that magic company. Get it from that magic company. Like I say, go find anyone who's ever seen me lecture and ask them if I'm selling stuff at the end of the lecture. So it was, what's the point? And then I got a message. My plan was to wake up on the Sunday morning. I was in, uh, Ryland was at the YMC on Saturday and we went out to the cinema in the evening and we spent the day in London on Sunday and I woke up to a ton of hate messages. And my plan was to just post on YouTube and just go, thanks. In fact, some of you that are on Facebook might have seen a post that I put on Facebook um, that I deleted a few minutes later. And I deleted it a few minutes later because of a message that I got on Facebook. And the message was, this is a message to thank you for all you do for the magic community. Hope this is all right. I had a break from the community. Uh, and two years ago, I found your YouTube channel and it rekindled my passion for magic. Since your videos and advice on the channel Magic TV, 
I've started performing again. I've entered three competitions. And on Monday, the 23rd of January, I did my exam for the Magic Circle. So once again, thank you for all you do for the Magic community. And then I deleted the post that I was putting up. Went onto Facebook and deleted it. Because that is why I do what I do. That is why I sacrifice so much time, so much effort, so much energy. That is why I do it all for free. That is why I have literally had other people running my business so I could focus on basically doing a full-time job plus then some for £600 a month. That is why I do it. I'm in a situation where I can give back. When I could be sitting at home playing on my PlayStation... I could, I, I'm, I'm trying to give back to the community. And you know what? It's about this person. It's about this person and every other person that's ever watched Magic TV that has ever, ever, ever felt my content has helped them in any way. It's not for people like Warrior Poets. It's not for people that are conspiracy theorists that think that um, I'm, I'm trying to... Um, uh, create some sort of mafia cartel within the magic industry <laughs> for some strange unknown reason even though I don't have a fucking magic shop or a Murphy's account it's not for those people it's not for people like Gaz Lawrence that slag off people that are infinitely more talented than he will ever be it is not for people like that I'll tell you who it's for it's for people like the person who I just read the content out for that is who it's for and for everybody everybody who has ever slagged me off and accused me of doing stuff that I don't do and made me feel bad about myself and made me feel bad about my appearance and made me feel bad as a parent for every single one of you keep it up yeah I may falter I might sometimes <coughs> be frustrated I might sometimes think what's the point but you know what this is why this right here is why so carry on Carry on trying to make me feel bad. I don't care. Because I'm going to carry on doing what I do. And, 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 and you can all do whatever you want to do. If you want to watch me. Because here's the thing. I'm going to leave you with this point. Here's the thing. My mentor, Brad Burton. He turned around to me once and he said. Uh, it, was, it was a while ago. And he said to me. I want to make two lists. Make a list of everything that people don't like about you. Make a li list of everything. Every reason people don't like you. Then make another list of every single reason people do like you. And what that showed me is it's the same thing. Those people who don't like me. It's because I'm loud. I'm opinionated. I swear. I say it like it is. There's no shades of grey. It's all black and white. Well, those are the reasons that people like me. And I am sick to death of trying to change the people's minds that don't like me. And trying to get them to like me. Oh, Craig's like Marmite. Oh, Craig's not a nice guy. But you know what? You don't like me. That's fine. But here's the thing. Don't be too faced about me. Don't be too faced about it. If you don't like me online, then please don't come up to me and shake my hand at Blackpool. Walk the other way. Walk the other way. Because I know that there's people that shook my hand. I'm not stupid. I wasn't born yesterday. I know there's people that shook me, that shake my hand at Blackpool. And I know that they've been slagging me off. I know that. I'm not a Muppet. I'm not stupid. If you don't like me, I'm not going to try and change your mind. But just keep away from me. Okay? Because I'm not doing this for you. And for Scott. And um, here's your review show. Everything Pro Magic. Forgot the name of it there. Two things. One, I sincerely apologise for ranting at you the way that I did. It was not right. I do not, however, apologise for the content of the video. I do not apologise because, honestly, I have been a reviewer long enough and I don't think there's many people that, re that have done reviews as long as me. Probably me and David Penn and that's it. I've been a reviewer long enough to know what's right and what's wrong. And I'm very good at looking at a review and cutting through the crap. There are so many inconsistencies. Dude, you want to carry on reviewing products, you've got to get it right. You've got to get it right. Do your research. Don't go out there and make statements about things not being handcrafted when in reality they are. Don't make a big deal about a reset when it's five seconds long.
Don't make a big deal about a jacket when the only reason you're saying you can't wear a jacket is because you need a pocket to put something in. Don't make a big deal of, um, you know, uh, the hand size when that's not an issue. And for the love of God, try it out in the real world. Try it out, or at least try it out to a friend. Do a wife test or a, uh, I don't know, you do a wife test or a husband test or a girlfriend test or a boyfriend test or a dad test or a mom test. Do some sort of test on it to yourself. Try it out. Get to the point where you've actually physically gone through the motions because the fall is very clever. The way that the gimmick is operated and the way that the card is loaded face up into position in a second in such a naturally motivated action is very clever. Just, you know, you're probably not going to listen to a word that I say, but, you know, you've had your, you've had your moment in the sun. You've got your videos with thousands of views. This is great. You don't want it to go back down to two or 300 views. You, the way you don't do that is by making sure that you stay consistent. That's all I've got to say about that. Guys, if you love me, thank you. If my content has proved valuable to you, thank you. I'm sorry I uh, wavered. Sorry I uh, disappointed you. If I disappointed you, I'm sorry. But I'm not going to try and change your mind as to who I am. I am who I am. And uh, I'm not going to apologise for that. I'll see you again tomorrow. Mm.